I feel kind of special to all of those here at Ember. I am a Southern Baptist religious person. And in the Southern Baptist, we don't call names because if you forget one person, they're going to hate you the rest of your life. And so I just want to say thank you for the invite. Today I have the pleasure of having my best friend here with me for 64 years, Mr. Lester Bailey, who while I was on death row for 30 years, visited me 10,999 visit. He did not miss one week. I stand before you to give you some truth, some honest advice. Yes, today is a beautiful day. I am one who believes that when it rains, you should walk in the rain and not out of the rain. Because for 30 years, the rain was not allowed to fall on my body, not one drop. And so I embrace the rain, and I do, and I want you to realize that the sun will shine again in Georgia today. Thirty years, I lived inside a five-by-seven cage for a crime that the state of Alabama knew that I didn't commit. There was nothing I could do about being found guilty of a crime that I didn't commit. But while I was in that cage, I have always believed no matter where you at, no matter how much you have or don't have, you always have just enough to share with someone else. Today I come to tell the graduation of 2023, tomorrow is a new dawn. You're going to fall but I beg you to get up. Your plan will not always see the way that you have it in your mind. Life will throw you a curve. I know for a fact that at the age of 29, it throwed me a curve that I was not expecting. But I truly believe that all of us is born with the instinct to survive whatever come our way. I challenge you to be great human beings. I challenge you to bring what is already inside of you. And what is in you is compassion. What is in you is understanding. What is in you is forgiveness. And what is in you is love. While I was on Alabama death row, never in my life did I realize that all of those things was inside of me. I ask that you realize that success is not always about how much money you're going to make. But success to me is when you make it, you reach down and you pull someone up. And hopefully that person will pull someone up. I truly believe that what America needs today is young people who are willing to stand up I want to apologize to you for my generation for failing you. I want to apologize for the generation ahead of me because I truly believe that every generation should leave it better for the next generation. My generation do not believe in you, but you're looking at a man today that believes that the young people are the one who have the answer to what's ever America. I truly believe that you are the one who is going to right a wrong. I truly believe that you have the backbone to stand up and say this is not right. I truly believe that you are the one who is going to go into neighborhoods where you're being told not to go in and teach and learn. I truly believe that all of us it's not the worst that we all have done. I stand here today to ask you 
to be that person to reach your hand out and be a friend for those who don't have friends, to be understanding to those who don't understand, to have joy where there's hatred. I stand here today to tell you that after spending 30 years in a five by seven, I came home with more strength than when I went into prison. I came home with more love and more understanding than I had when I went to prison. I don't understand why we are where we are today. Today, I have to believe that we are better when we is able to sit down and have an open and honest conversation about race. I had the privilege to go over this country and I've had the privilege to talk to young people and they asked me, Mr. Hinton, do you think racism is better today than it was when you went to prison? And I always tell them the truth. I believe that racism is worse today than it was when I went to prison. But I truly believe that all of you holds the key to making this country the country that I truly believe it is capable of being. I challenge you to stand up against those who would define you to stand up. I challenge you to be the men and women that God put you on this earth to be. I challenge you to take someone and become a friend to them. You don't have to know them. I challenge you to realize that no matter where you're at, no matter where you are, you should be able to call someone and lean on them. Every one of you in here, you're going to need someone to lean on. Regardless of what success you might think you have, regardless of where you might live, you're still going to need someone to lean on. And when you make that money, let's not forget about Emory, the one that gave you this education. Let's not forget to give back to this college as it has given to you. Let's not forget to give back to our community and even in community that you're not used to going to, go in those communities and see what you can do to help some child become better human beings. We all are charged to do that. When I came out of prison, I came out of prison with not a hatred in my body. I forgave the men that did this to me because they had the power to do it. I want you to know today that forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about you. I didn't forgive those men so they can sleep good at night. I forgave those men so I could sleep good at night. I forgave those men because my belief teaches me to forgive. My belief teaches me to love my enemy. My belief teaches me to have compassion. My belief teaches me to have forgiveness. I come to Emma today to ask you to have that what is already inside of you. All you have to do is let it out. After today you receive your degree, your degree will not determine who you are and what you are. Every day that you get up, you get up with one thing, if nothing else, you get up with a choice. Every one of you would have a choice, whether you want to serve or not serve, whether you want to be a good human being or a bad human being, that choice is yours. I choose to try and be the best human being that I can be, but more important, I try to love, and I truly believe what this country needs is for us to learn how to love one another, to sit down and have an open and honest conversation with one of us. And when we do that, I truly believe that we will agree on most of everything 
and the few things that we disagree on, it should not cause us to live in a world of hatred the way we are living. I want you to be the best young men and young women that you could ever possibly be. I want you to realize that you're going to have some difficult days, but those difficult days, turn those difficult days into learning days. Who would have thought after spending 30 years inside of a cage, I would be at Embry standing today. I want each and every one of you to use me when you're having a rough day. Remember my name and remember if a man can live in a cage for 30 years and come out with love and understanding and compassion and forgiveness, surely I can do it as well. I want you to love yourself. And when you can love yourself, you can learn to love others. I'm on a time limit and I won't hold you. I know you're ready to party. And so I won't keep you, but I want you to realize that I have the pleasure of working for Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. And just like the Marine Corps, EJI is looking for a few good men and a few good women. Thank you so much.